to get a better understanding of the wide receivers in the 2019 NFL Draft, I thought I would break them down by position so that we could get a better understanding of exactly which ones the Dallas Cowboys could be interested in. To accomplish this, I grouped these WRs into the positions I envision them playing in the NFL, X, C, or, slot, receiver. I tried to be as honest as possible in my assessment of each wide receiver, but it's a little difficult to project their position in the NFL because it's not as clear-cut as other positions in the league. A lot of these WRs have the ability and versatility to play any one of the receiver positions, and will likely be asked to do so because it makes things more difficult for opposing defenses. Continue reading below to see how I have the 2019 WR Draft Class Group by the position I believe they will play in the NFL. Hopefully this will give you a better understanding of the type of WR the Dallas Cowboys could possibly be targeting. X Receiver The X Receiver, or Split End, is more commonly known as the number one wide receiver in the NFL. For the Dallas Cowboys, this player is unquestionably Amari Cooper. With him on board and more than likely fixing to receive a contract extension, it's highly unlikely the Cowboys are looking to draft this type of receiver. But, we will take a look at them regardless. The X receiver more often than not lines up on the line of scrimmage and is the furthest away from the tight end, typically on the opposite side of the formation. Since they line up on the line of scrimmage, they aren't allowed to motion pre-snap, meaning they usually draw the opposing defense's best cornerback. A typical X in the NFL is a player gifted with size and strength, but speed and route running ability is starting to become more prominent as well. They have to have the ability to work the boundary and beat press coverage. Here are the WRs in the 2019 NFL Draft class who I believe to project as an X receiver in the NFL, Hakeem Butler D. K. Metcalf J. Jarchega Whiteside Kelvin Harmon Antoine Wesley Travis Fulgham Preston Williams Miles Boykin Jamal Custis C. Receiver The C. Receiver, or, Flanker, is more commonly known as a No. 2 Wide Receiver in the NFL in a the Z receiver is a hybrid of the X and slot WR. For the Cowboys, this player is Michael Gallup. Even with Gallup on the roster, I don't think it would keep the Cowboys from drafting another Z-type receiver. The Z receiver traditionally lines up on the same side of the field as the tight end. This receiver will be set back off the line of scrimmage in order to keep the tight end eligible to run passing routes, which also means they can be used in pre-snap motion. Because of this, they are required to run a more diverse route tree and work the middle of the field more often instead of the boundary like the X receiver. Since the Z position is kind of a hybrid between the slot and X, these receivers line up in multiple alignments and play a variety of roles. They need to be able to play on the outside and on the inside, which only adds to their value. It's that kind of diversity that could intrigue the Cowboys into drafting one of these Z receivers. Here are the WRs I project to be Z receivers in the NFL, Emmanuel Hall David Sills v. Terry McLaurin DeMarcus Lodge Tyre Brady Darius Slater and Gary Jennings Jr. Anthony Johnson primary Z receivers who could receive extra work in the slot, Debo Samuel Riley Ridley Paris Campbell Stanley Morgan Jr. Keyshawn Johnson Cody Thompson, slot, and big slot receiver I believe there are two different types of slot receivers in the NFL. The first kind is the traditional, slot, receiver. These are the kind of slot WRs like Cole Beasley has been with the Dallas Cowboys. They are generally the smaller, quicker receivers who win with their separation ability and route running. The second kind is the big slot. These kind of slot WRs are generally too fast for linebackers and too big for safeties to cover. This is an evolving position and players are starting to earn a more prominent role in the NFL. They are kind of a hybrid of a big wide receiver and a tight end. Think Juju Smith-Schuster with the Pittsburgh Steelers or Evan Ingram with the New York Giants. Slot receivers generally have the advantage of getting a free release. 
they will work either side of the field and are constantly asked to go in motion. They rely on their change of direction and the ability to find open spaces in the defense. With the departure of Beasley and free agency, the Cowboys could be looking at one of these types of slot receivers. Here are the WRs I project to be slot receivers in the NFL, Marchese Brown, Nicole Hardman, Andy Isabella, Hunter Renfro, Penny Hart, Ryan Davis, Greg Dorch, Deontay Johnson, Terry Godwin 2. Here are the big slot receivers, uh, A. Brown, Nikhil, Harry, Dylan, Mitchell, Jacoby, Myers, Jalen, Hurd, Anthony, Ratliff, Williams, Lil, Jordan, Humphrey, Keelan, Doss, Alex, Wesley, 2019 NFL Draft, Dill is Cowboys wide receiver having only one pick in the first two rounds, and none within the top 50, the Dallas Cowboys would be best served to just sit and pick during the 2019 NFL Draft. If anything, they should likely look to move back in the draft to acquire some more draft capital. Right? Well, this is an interesting offseason for the Dallas Cowboys. Not only is their head coach on a one-year deal of sorts and coming off a season in which his seed reached the highest temperatures it's ever seen, but Stephen Jones has repeatedly preached the importance to take the next step, no more will it be accepted to just get to the postseason and lose in the divisional round. At least that's what they seem to be saying. So, it's fair to say it is time for the Cowboys to go all in, all in on this championship window with their elite defensive players, for the most part, on team-friendly deals. All in after already dealing their 2019 first round pick for wide receiver Amari Cooper. All in to take the next step. What better way to go all in than to add an elite defensive player to your roster? One who fits exactly what the defense needs in an interior pass rusher and run stuffer. An athletic three technique with Aaron Donald like flashes on his college tape and elite traits which project greatness. That player, if you haven't yet guessed, is Houston defensive lineman Ed Oliver. Despite his elite traits and abilities, Ed Oliver is expected to fall in the draft and be taken in the 10 to 15 range. The most popular landing spot for Oliver according to mock drafts. The Atlanta Falcons 14th overall. With their first round pick next year and a package of some other selections in this year's draft, the Cowboys would likely have the ammo to move up to 12th or 13th overall to steal Oliver from the Falcons. The owners of those picks are the Green Bay Packers and Miami Dolphins, each in need of adding talent throughout their entire roster. The Packers, who select 12th overall, also have the 30th pick in the first round of the same draft. This could make it more palatable to move their 12th pick to Dallas, especially if they are getting an extra first next year and an extra second rounder in 2019 as well. Let's be honest, this is all very unlikely to happen. The Cowboys are unlikely to move up. A team like the Dolphins, who are probably targeting a quarterback, are unlikely to move back. And did I mention the Cowboys never like to trade up? Ed Oliver is the type of player that will make you leverage your future drafts for, though. An off-season that contains re-signing Demarcus Lawrence and trading up for Ed Oliver is a damn good off-season. And one that puts the Cowboys in a really nice spot to take the next step, a pass rush package with those two together on the field would be unbelievable to see. And while some have concerns about Ed Oliver's size holding up against the run in the NFL, his ability to play with leverage and penetrate gaps alleviate all my potential concerns. And after all, if you add Ed Oliver to his already talented defense, your first round pick next year won't be in the top 20 anyway. We've all heard of someone participating in the NFL Combine who has bombed in one way or another at the event, but probably not to the extent of Ja'Kai Polite. Things couldn't have possibly gone any worse if he had purposely sabotaged himself. Because of this, his draft stock has taken a dramatic nosedive, so much so he could fall right into the lap of the Dallas Cowboys in the second round. Think of all of the possible ways you could bomb at the Combine, and Polite probably did it. Team interviews, check. Media session at the podium, check. Bombing the workouts, check. Showing up unprepared and out of shape, check and check. The interview process with NFL teams is where things first started to go badly for Polite. 
he specifically called out several teams for grilling and bashing him over just his bad plays. Surprisingly enough, this is not uncommon and he should have been better prepared to handle such scrutiny. Having a bad interview isn't the end of the world, but it definitely can impact the way a team can think about a certain prospect. This is where several teams started considering taking Polite off their draft board altogether. But, it was his on-the-field work that may have been the last straw. Polite was supposed to be a speed rusher, but his 4.8 140-yard dash and 1.7 110-yard split suggests otherwise. He must have been really displeased with this time as well, because he pulled himself out of the rest of the events due to a hamstring injury, which many scouts on hand claimed was fake and complete bullshit. Florida to Jakai Polite Jakai Polite definitely didn't leave at any stone unturned while doing his best to tank his draft stock. He was once considered a consensus top 15 draft pick, now he may slide out of the first round altogether. For Dallas Cowboys fans, this may sound somewhat similar to what happened to Randy Gregory back in 2015. Of course, his draft stock took a hit for an entirely different reason. He was bombed at the Combine, testing positive for an illegal substance, more than likely marijuana. He too was a consensus top 15 pick but slid all the way to the Cowboys in the second round where they drafted him 60th overall. It's definitely feasible to think Jakai Polite could still be on the board when the Cowboys are on the clock at 58th overall in the second round. The question is, would they pull the trigger on yet another troubled pass rusher like they did with Gregory? Unfortunately, there's no easy way to answer this. The Cowboys do need depth at defensive end, but Polite doesn't exactly measure up to what they typically look for at the position. At 6 feet 3 inches, 258 pounds with 32 and 5 eighths arms he is a little undersized for Dallas. They generally prefer taller and lengthier day, but there's always the exception if they're talented enough. There's no denying Polite is talented, but he's still very much a work in progress. This is one of those risk-reward situations the Dallas Cowboys would have to weigh very carefully. They have a history of pulling the trigger on such players, but this is a team on the verge of greatness and may prefer someone who can be relied upon more. What do you think? Would you take a chance on drafting Jakai Polite? Name, Penny Hart Position, Wide Receiver School, Georgia State Conference, Sun Belt Class, RS Junior Jersey, No. 18 Recruitment Rating, 2 Star HT, 5 Feet 8 Inches WT, 180 DOB, The 5th of July 1996 Highlights, Follow JBP on IG, HTTPS colon slash slash www.instagram.com slash justbombsproduction slash click show more, follow me on Twitter, HTTPS colon slash slash twitter.com slash Scott Takeade Follow me on Instagram, HTTPS colon slash slash www.instagram.com com slash Scott Takeade slash follow JBP on Twitter https colon slash slash twitter dot com slash JBP underscore official like JBP on Facebook https colon slash slash www dot Facebook dot com slash just dash bombs dash productions dash two five five eight six three eight oh one five nine oh one six seven slash Georgia State WR Penny Hart twenty seventeen highlights junior five eight thousand one hundred eighty pounds Georgia State WR Penny Hart is a dynamic playmaker. Pros Penny Hart has shown the ability to play both out of the slot or on the outside, but will likely find most of his success in the NFL as a slot receiver. Despite being a small school prospect, he is surprisingly well developed as a route runner and understands how to temper his roots to create space and separation. This is a testament to his football IQ and work ethic. Hart's calling card is a short area quickness. He shows quick feet on film. It helps him quickly get off the line of scrimmage and also helps him when getting in and out of his breaks as a route runner. He accelerates and decelerates with ease, showing plus burst, and easily changes directions at the drop of a dime. Looks natural catching the ball on film and shows the ability to extend to make catches thrown outside his frame rarely drops passes, is a threat after the catch. 
he is slippery once he gets in the open field and has a little fight to him when he faces contact. Used as a gadget player on jet sweeps, reverses, and end arounds. Also has special teams experience as both a punt and kick returner. Cons, the biggest negative about Penny Hart is obviously his size. It will likely limit him to strictly playing out of the slot in the NFL, although he did show the ability to be a vertical threat at Georgia State, averaging 14.6 yards per reception. There are also concerns about his durability and the level of competition he played against in college. Hart doesn't show a lot of functional strength on film. This will hurt him against press coverage in the NFL and as a blocker in the passing game. He shows the willingness as the blocker, but gets overpowered by bigger defensive backs. Frame might already be maxed out. His lack of size also comes into play as a pass catcher. He shows the ability to contort his body to catch passes thrown outside his frame, but he doesn't have a very large catch radius. Struggles in contested catch situations as well. Much better catching the ball over his shoulder as a down-the-field receiver than he is when he's square to the ball. Cowboys fit with the Dallas Cowboys, Penny Hart would more than likely step in and become Cole Beasley's replacement in the slot. He may not be as good as a route runner as Beasley is at this stage in his career, but his change of direction ability and speed should make him an immediate contributor as a rookie. Hart should also figure into the Cowboys' return game as well. He has experience as both a punt and kick returner, and should be in the mix to become their return specialist. Offensively, he can be used in a variety of different ways. He's shown the ability to play either on the inside or outside in the passing game and can be used on gadget plays such as jet sweeps, reverses, and end arounds. Overall, there is a lot to like about Penny Hart and the variety of ways he can help the Cowboys. He would have some large shoes to fill, but he has the kind of skill set and game-breaking ability that could endear him to fans immediately. He is projected to be a day-three pick, and I think he would be an absolute steal at that point in the draft for the Cowboys.